Okay, today we're going to be rebuilding the vacuum lift pump on an Optimax Mercury 225. Um, I replaced the bulb, I replaced all the line. Um, what happens is the lift pump's not able to draw enough fuel to fill the tank. So then I have to go back and manually, before I take off, I have to manually pump the ball back up to fill the tank. And then I can take off and it actually goes on plane and I can cruise around, you know, easily. But the problem is getting started. So that's typically indicative of a vacuum actuated pump. So let's rebuild one. sides of the back. Okay. The part we're going to be dealing with today is going to be this pump here. This pump has um, diaphragms in it and this ethanol gases were hard on them. So to get to this, we got to loosen this tank, slide it out of the way, take everything loose and rebuild it and trying to lose any parts. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna need um, 13 millimeter to remove this. These are gonna be a little bit trickier. I'm gonna have to use probably a swivel to get to it. Um, and a, I think it's an eight millimeter, yeah, eight millimeter. So we can get a shallow socket. In case you don't know what a swivel is, this is a swivel. So basically it articulates 180 degrees or so, or a little bit less, so that you can get in tight spots. Doesn't mean we're gonna be able to get in here, but we can see. Yep, so we're gonna have to get a wrench on that one, which is fine. But if we get this one bolt loose, it should swivel out of its way. Should, let's try that first. Spill oil everywhere. No reason why I'd rather kind of move it completely out of the way. Yep, got two first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got 13 millimeter here we removed. We're going to take the bottom right out. We can't get to this one without a wrench, and I don't want to go chasing wrenches right this minute. So we're going to use a swivel extension to break that bolt loose. So we can remove it and tilt that back without spilling anything. So we get that off. And I'm going to drop the cowlings. Makes everything easier, but it's just more time consuming. Every easy one you want it to be. Any other time wouldn't be filming, it'd be easier. Just tilt it back out of the way. So make sure you don't pour your oil out, make sure it stays snug. Okay. Remove two bolts at night to the vapor separation tank or BST. No matter if they comes apart, pay attention if you're not sure. Use your little phone, everybody has one, take a picture. Typically that's what I do. Lay things out where I can find them and articulate where they came from. So that's the bottom boat. That's the top boat. Yes, yeah, the boat. Texas thing. We faced up the right way. Kind of like egg and finger. Same thing. Or a winder. Once you get that out, allow it to be some fuel loss. Don't freak out. It's fine. Let me get a tool. Be right back. Okay. So, basically, you want to work this loose to where it comes out. 
Hopefully there's not a lot of fuel loss, but there may be a little bit. Yeah, see those are dry. Alright, oh, we don't want to lose these little parts here. That's not a good thing. Alright, so. See how that one came loose? Just going to lay it down the way it came off. Okay, so now there's the lift pump. I'm going to take the next two bolts out. Pay attention again. Now it's orientated. So let that be caught and catch take down there that you can't see. Same thing with this one, crack it. Stubber. All right, there we go. Got one more lesson sometime. Yeah, we pay attention to orientation, okay? So the way this one comes off. We have a gasket diaphragm. Back plate. So I'm going to lay it down just like this. That's how it's going to go against the motor. And you have the two diaphragms, uh, like one way valves. I don't know what the proper term is. So you're going to put this up so it keeps it above fuel level. The diaphragms. This is dry, so let me get you in here so you can see this stuff. Give me a second. Okay, as you can see here, see these little springs that the diaphragm bounces against. That's there, so it doesn't the spring doesn't tear a hole through the diaphragm. Then you have like these little one-way diaphragms that are down here on each side, so it creates like a, a back and forth action. So it pumps it in one, and then as the pulse happens the diaphragm bounces off the spring and it sends it back up into the next diaphragm which is here so in out and this goes into the vst tank okay so your other diaphragm here you see how that's bulging and it's pretty stiff so i'm gonna assume these things are no good and we went ahead and bought a new quicksilver kit which is a mercury product from bass pro shops now because they had them in stock so we're going to go ahead and start rebuilding okay again keeping orientation this is going to be the bottom this is the top so taking this diaphragm and this gasket off spring and see how it goes together so we need to keep that same layout pull everything out separate our parts pieces diaphragms and springs ready and just match what we took apart there's an instruction booklet in case something gets backwards so be sure and reference it if you need to so I'll pour everything out right here so there's my diaphragms my pins my little spring and my miniature little diaphragm here or not diaphragm but the little thing to keep the spring from going through the diaphragm excuse me so we're gonna snap that on never get these things in there right it's not that tricky I'm just that simple okay typically if you screw it in one way it'll pop on easier all right so there's that one and we're just gonna match the gaskets okay and the diaphragms so there's two diaphragms here exactly identical I'm gonna set them down and you have two gaskets totally different okay so that's going to be the one on the front here. So we'll put one diaphragm with that 
one gasket. So we see it's a small spring, the small uh, protector. Okay, I don't know the proper terms. I'm an electrician, not a boat mechanic. But, you know, I'm playing one today. So, with that being said, I'll make sure I got my diaphragm in the correct orientation again, as such. So here it is. This is gonna be in this position here. So this gasket will be this direction, right? I'm gonna put it back in the hole here. Okay, you can see that hole right there, which is a recess uh, that's cast into it. And these are my two pieces. So if you'll notice there's an arrow pointing, that's the direction your gaskets will go also. So get this bolt started, put that on. At this point in time, I'll grab the other bolt, give this the way I do it, and I'll put it in. And that just kind of keeps everything level for me, okay? Everybody's different. So now in these, where your fuel is getting circulated through from the fuel tanks to the motors. So this is the inlet. This is the outlet to the VST. Okay, so that directly pumps into the VST here. So what we're going to do now is take these pins out. And to do that, you depress. Because these little pins come just like this. I know it's hard to see. But the little pins come like this. So we want to push that pin back out. Whoop, look at that. Don't lose that. You can buy them separately. You just don't want to. So that pin needs to be pushed back out to be removed. So that's what we're going to try to do. I don't know if y'all can see that. But we're going to try. So we're going to use a razor knife push slap. Nothing happens. I'm going to try to angle. Okay. I have a tool somewhere which I can't find, of course. I was trying to make this video. Well, I was going to push that pin back. See? That pin's back. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my needle nose. Go to the other side, which you can't see. Let's get you down here. Get you down here real quick. And pull your legs out. Okay, so we get you down here at a better angle. So now I'm gonna get my needle nose and I'm gonna grab that diaphragm deck right there. Actually, go ahead and move this spring, okay, and protector off. Get that out the way because we know where it goes. So, this diaphragm right there, see how I push that pin out right there? So, we're gonna go ahead and wiggle it out. There you go. See how it all comes out? Just like that. So, set that aside. Do your other one, okay? You can use a needle nose, razor knife. A flat blade screwdriver, which is probably safer because we'll be tearing stuff up by gouging it. So we'll take that screwdriver and push that pin down just like that. Now we'll do the same thing. We'll go to the other side. Let me spin it around. We're going to pull the whole thing out. Okay? You know how stuff never works right. But it's okay. You get the gist. See, so yeah, it just pops out. So we got all those pieces out. So now we're going to rebuild it. We're going to put in the new diaphragms. We're going to take this. Now we have the pins, we have the diaphragms. So we're gonna go ahead and stick those on, okay? So how did that one go, do you remember? I remember. It's gonna go back side here, okay? This is the one that goes into this one. So we're gonna stick it down, and then we're gonna need to push, depress that pin. See that pin? I know it's hard, but that pin right there, okay? So we're gonna depress that pin. set back up okay this is a part a lot of people don't understand so basically you need something like a punch okay we're just gonna use the bolt we're just tapping we're not beating the crap out of the bolt just tap it. okay so it's set and so now it's flush so once you do that because you need a flat square surface for that pin otherwise you're gonna snap that pin off and you're gonna be in a world of hurt okay because now you gotta do it all over again so as you can see it's flush okay what that does it spreads those little ears out right there see them and, then, and now it's seated. So we're gonna do the same thing for the one on this side. Okay, as you can see, there it is. So then we're gonna grab a mounting bolt or the bolt that attaches the pump. We're just gonna tap it. We don't have to go crazy, man. That's not what it's about. It's just tap it. Otherwise, you're going to snap it. And you ain't trying to tear stuff up. You're just trying to put it together. You'd like to get on the lake to fish. I know I would. So, right now, our lake's 10 foot low. You can't get big boats in, which is why I had to bring this one back home. So, there's that side. Okay? So, let's go ahead and reassemble the pump the correct way. Now, you see how it's dry here? We need to get a little bit of two-stroke lube 
so that we can get those O-rings to go back in that VST, okay? Okay, so I got a little two-stroke lube, two-stroke oil. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it around there. It doesn't have to be two-stroke oil, it's just what I have available, okay? You know, so there's nothing wrong with using what you got, right? Okay, so we got that part done. Now we need to do the um, small pump. Dive around. Oh. All right. So two screws. There's a reason why I'm doing it this way. Y'all just keep watching. Maybe like holy guacamole, this dude's making it hard. Not really. Other than not having three hands. So there's that. Okay. Then we're gonna slip this back together, just like this. Alright. So there's that. Now we're gonna get this one. Put it in the middle. Turn it where it stays. Some spring bikes. Take your gaskets. And your base plate and start sliding them on. Okay. And we know it's going to be a little resistance. Ah, out of order, Bob. Day job, huh? Like I said, you need a few different hands going on. So get them started. You need to check and make sure everything is still stayed where it's supposed to be. It's located properly, I should say. Same like right there. Tricky Ricky. Once you get it started, it's pretty easy. It's tricky getting started. Because everything's cattywampus. Yes, I said cattywampus. Okay. That's it. So make sure everything looks good. Squeeze together, check your gaskets. Make sure there's no voids that you can see or a wrinkle in the gasket. I'm gonna address that now before you start tightening it up. See everything's smooth around? So we're good. downhill part okay same thing just keep holding it Move your hose all the way a little bit snug it down check the gaskets again before you go crazy okay see so everything still looks good all the directions are still straight okay so next. all right so we know we pre lubed the o-rings so that'll help them now we're gonna get it back in here pull this tank back okay at this point don't forget this gasket. It is important. So basically it goes here on the back of the pump. Okay. Just like that. Oops. And yes, it always gives you some bits, but it's okay. You just give her a little persuasion. She'll go. Just like that. And snug them down properly. Put it stuff together correctly, it'd be alright. Huh? <laughs> it's 
for the game. Forget something, you don't forget it the second time. Or you may, because it's been so long. It reminds you, trust me, nobody's perfect. sockets that they have their place. That's it. Let's uh, get some water on her and test it to see if it's actually going to work. Okay, so real quick, we're just going to see the stuff here. So again, this is the Quicksilver diaphragm kit. And it's Optimax 225. Um, only thing you're really doing is these are the one-way little valves that open and close to move the fuel pump from side to side. Okay, or the fuel through the pump, excuse me. So, these keep the springs from tearing through the diaphragm. You see how disfigured it is it's wore out okay it's just smooth wore out same thing with that one okay diaphragm is stiff so keep that in mind this ethanol gas is really hard on these gaskets and when they get like this they're not gonna do their job properly so that's it can't get uh, much easier than that man so let's put some water on it and see if she's gonna crank up all right since we got the bulb primed we'll go ahead and get the water turned on Try to get that position a little bit better. Alright, so she'll crank. 